<laughs> hey guys, this is Claire Kramer, and you're listening to Fanatics and the Fan. That's right, folks. This is Fanatics and the Fan. Welcome back. We are almost ready for Vision Con. Almost. Is this your first one? No, no. I mean, it's been a minute since I've been, but. Are they going to let you back? No. <laughs> no. no. They actually have a sign on the front door do not allow this man. Welcome back, my buddy Skyler. And of course, you guys know my news person, Liz. We've got so much to discuss. God, it's been so long since we've seen each other. Sorry for the delay. We've had bad weather down here in the Midwest. Um, we've had a lot of things happen now. I mean, we've got, we've got human beings in another part of the country doing amazing things for the first time ever. Go Team USA. We've had... Uh, I thought the Olympics was a thing. We had Philadelphia do something that they've rarely ever done before. Um, and we get to see a lot of cool trailers during that time. That was my best part of the Super Bowl for me. What did Philadelphia do? Oh, they lost, didn't they? No, they won. The Eagles won, didn't they? We don't care. We were watching the we were watching the commercials and the trailers. The commercials were awful. The trailers were great. Um, any standout trailers from uh, Super Bowl? I mean, the Cloverfield. That was the thing. Cloverfield was a big thing because they immediately dropped it on Netflix the next day. They were like, hey, yeah, everybody get ready. No, seriously, get ready because it's going to be there in four hours. Oh, it wasn't the next day. It was after the Super Bowl. It was, it was immediately after the Super Bowl. Super Bowl takes like 12 and a half hours, right? So, I only watched it like quick one. tangent. After the Super Bowl has always been ingenious. Um, a little lone TV show that turned into a major TV show. Grey's Anatomy, one of their best seasons ever happened because they did that show directly after the Super Bowl. Um, Cloverfield got great numbers. Ironically, NBC decided to do something intelligent and put their very best top show following this year's Super Bowl, This Is Us, um, and they put up the episode that was going to make everybody in the nope. world cry. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> absolutely not. I refuse. I refuse. <laughs> Most people did. Um, I, uh, you know, it was cool to see the newest uh, Infinity War. Oh yeah, Infinity. Because you know, I've been dogging do 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 Thanos graphics forever. Yeah, you always are. Because Th Thanos has gone through like six different iterations of Thanos just in this one series. Like we have giant freaking lavender Thanos, and now it's like <laughs> human sized plum colored Thanos. I don't, I don't like, know what you guys are talking about. I, I, I really think that it's a good idea to put uh, one of the villains from the McDonald's Happy Meals. <laughs> Uh, in in the Marvel, you know, they're really branching out. Evil Grimace. Note to production staff: I want Grimace on screen right now. <laughs> Let McDonald's sue me. <laughs> but what about you? What, I mean, I know you weren't even interested in the game. Two things. Two things that I am excited about. Well, Star Wars is coming out. The Chewbacca one. I want to see what a little baby Chewbacca looks like personally, <laughs> but that's just me. And a. Uh, uh, I almost called him Childish Gambino, but his name is Danny Glover, Don playing... Donald Glover. Donald Glover. Don Danny, Danny, Danny Glover. Is, uh, Danny's the, the other one. The, the weapon guy. The other one. <laughs> <laughs> the one that they're not related to. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, a lot of people, not to cut you off, but a lot of people are upset about Han Solo. Why? I don't know. That's why, that's why I cut it off. Like, Because you're excited about it. Like, I'm not super face. excited about it. I am excited to see a baby Chewbacca because I think they could do something cute without making it absurd. Um, and more than likely, it's just going to be Chewbacca with like nicer hair. Baby Chewbacca. Uh, baby yeah. Chewbacca. Have you ever seen a puppy? <laughs> <laughs> like that's that's it. Except it's legs go like this. <laughs> oh, we got to put a disclaimer at the top of the show. <laughs> never Otherwise, it was on. <laughs> I am actually really excited for Infinity War because we're seeing Captain Shield. We're seeing every single person that we wanted to be in one of these movies is in them. We've seen clips on the wall. Now we've seen all I'm kinds of stuff that's going to be in it. I'm really Shh, I no one asked. About his no one asked you. But the <laughs> other big thing is one-eyed Thor, because he's not at one point, according to our pop doll that came out yep, last week. Which we broke on our last show, and you guys got to see that. But I'm also really excited to see the Guardians finally interacting with the rest of the team. That's like it's going to be so great. I just want Rocket to be awesome. I really wanted <laughs> Thor to be like. Who the hell are you? <laughs> you know? But I mean, I mean he did land great. like a big ass bug on their windshield. Right. So. I mean, the clip was great, but 
I, I, and I, that's the best. It's the most I'm looking forward to Infinity War is them. Um, I would love to have been there to watch the guy write those paychecks. Though. That's a lot. There's, that's a, a, heft there's a lot of writing. people in that. I mean, they, they, if they did like a roll call, it's just going to be like, oh, Captain America, <laughs> Black Panther, Audrey Hepburn, I mean, it pretty much Sonic the Hedgehog. Because like they, they, they had that shot at the end yeah. of the trailer where it's just... Got all of them running through the woods, and, and there's a lot. That shot is just in Wakanda. Yeah, yeah. no. And no, I, if you look back I, there, it's just like the entire cast of Friends back there, too. And I am once again going to throw out how excited I am that Halle Berry has the potential to actually marry Black Panther now, now that they can all be in the same universe, and that's how it's supposed to be. But I digress, because the other thing that I'm excited about is Jurassic World 2, because, y'all, we can't get enough Chris Pratt. We can, though. No. <laughs> we, we, we can. Then please don't suck. You're That's all I can say is I'm gonna look. Which, Sorry? please don't Sorry. suck. What was that? Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, Chris Pratt does like one thing and one thing. Like I love watching him on screen, but I don't go into something. He's like maybe he's gonna really change it up this time. He's like he's like ha ha I'm goofy, but look at my abs. And I'm like you know what I'm goofy too. <laughs> so before we get into the news, um, and, and I'm shocked neither of you two said this because especially you, um, once again, Deadpool is, is changing the rules and breaking, making things better. They drop an amazing new poster, the, the Flashdance poster, which, which is actually part of our news, not to like right. jump on the news or anything. Well, it's, I mean, it's really not really part of the news, but it's, it's hilarious. Um, it's from... Um, it's um, a great poster. It is a really great poster. Well, the trailer dropped the very next day, too. Mm -hmm. And, 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 man, please don't suck. Yeah. <laughs> but see, the thing is, I think the, more these the get... studio is more hands off with this one. They were for the first one. And right. that leaves potential for it to suck a lot less because <laughs> there's less people going, no, nope, can't do that. No, nope, can't do that. Nah, I don't know about that. And instead, he gets to be in it. And they're bringing back everyone that was in it and the new kitty pride movie that's going to start being in production is tied into the deadpool universe so that means kitty and colossus pre-wedding story book whatever are going to be in a movie together yay oh maybe it'd be, maybe. It'd be yes. crazy if they actually the amount of jokes he could crack about them and deadpool uh, them and did him or kitty and colossus on deadpool i'm just uh um let's get to the news though let's get to the news real quick because there's a lot to cover and then we're going to talk about some vision kind some other stuff What's our first article there, Liz? Well, the first one we actually already talked about a little bit. It's Cloverfield dropping and how that's kind of, that's a big deal. Like, mm -hmm. it dropped out. Suddenly. Super right, suddenly. Right. There wasn't even like a hype for it. It was literally just that commercial and everyone went, ooh. And then it was there and everyone was like, oh. I think this series, uh, everything about this series is, is game changing. The first one, Nobody even knew what it was, which is really amazing. old school. And it came out a while ago. Right. It was 2008, I want to say. Right. And then when did Cloverfield... Uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane. That I have no idea. I, I actually I like seen that trailer. That. I, I, it it reminded me a lot of uh, that Brandon Fraser movie. Uh, Bedazz Mommy? Bedazzled, yeah. No, no. It was that uh, one. No, the one. George and the Jungle, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so Brandon, is it. Brandon's done a lot of movies. He's done a lot of bad movies. Yeah, what's what's next? Um, and this is, this is, if it's the one I think it is, if it's the one I think it is, it's good. this is a big one, and we're going to hold, we have to restrain This is it. a really big one. We already had a small reaction from Skylar about this, but... Off camera, thankfully. We don't, hopefully there'll be less bleeps on the on the on camera one. Zack Snyder is no longer directing Justice League. And whereas this started out as rumors of an amicable breakup, we have confirmed it is not. He has been <laughs> fired. Straight fired. So that's going to be... Before we get this guy, because I feel like he's getting ready to explode, I'm, I'm, I want to get your take on it. You, because you're also an actress, and, and your fan is work a little bit, and... I am, but Justice League is just, it hasn't been yet what I want it to be at all. That's not it his still fault. has not been, an, I know it's not his fault. In fact, firing him is probably the dumbest decision, but maybe bringing on someone new will liven it up a little, change it some, because he was the writer and director, right? Like... No, no, he wasn't the writer and director, but he was the director, and now maybe we'll have some new options. I'm already tired of <laughs> Justice League. I'm tired of the drama. 
You know, the drama of it. Behind it? Yeah, the drama of all of it. Okay. You know, I mean, honestly, if they didn't tell us any of this stuff and just produced product, I think the product would be received a little bit better. Yeah. You know, just... Maybe. Maybe. I mean, I mean... But Zack Snyder has a particular directing style that was not present in Justice League. It wasn't present specifically because it was not... Hello. Uh, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't present specifically because there was a lot of intervention from the studio. And that's not his fault. No. That's not his fault at all. He's just trying to do what he does. Um, and of course, there was the tragedy therein that took place that kind of took him from that. Uh, but I think, I think DC is, going, uh, is, is uh, making a really bold move, uh, really forward thinking. Uh, to my knowledge, I think they're thinking of um, a hiring Carrot Top as the director uh, for the next Justice League movie. And they're just going to replace flair. All, of, that. all of the actors. <laughs> they're just going to replace all of the actors with dressed up pine cones. Ooh, no! Um, or they can replace all of the actors with carrot top as well. That's exactly what it is. Oh, I can't even keep that up. Can we just keep Carrot that's Top in like Wonder Woman's little thing? The worst, the worst part is that dude is like scarily ripped. Yeah, like, and like just scary. You no, know, he looks he looks like Pennywise the Clown without the makeup, and like a lot scarier, like like Playgirl model Pennywise. <laughs> We've got two more to get to, and I really want to get because for our comic book fans, I really want to get to this to this next two real quick. This one is actually pretty big for comic book fans. Um, Marvel is unleashed. Uh, Venom 30th anniversary variant covers for like all of March. They're doing it on a bunch of things, I think. This is going to sound weird. How do you feel about Venom? I mean, I don't really know a whole lot about Venom. I, I, I know the symbiote, his name is Eddie Brock. Yes. Right? He looks a lot like Tom Hardy. Right? That's the thing. For me, the Venom symbiote has always, since 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 a little kid, has always freaked me out because he's uncontrollable, unkillable, and unstoppable. Like Ronald McDonald, yeah. Yeah, back to grimace. <laughs> yeah, it just freaks me out, and and I do. I have seen some of the covers, and hopefully, you guys are seeing them now. Um, he's spanning. Is it twenty books? It's uh, 20, yeah, 20 new books. Like the X-Men. Uh, yeah, it's some pretty own. big ones. Obviously, he's going to be in Spider-Man. There is an Avengers. There's Captain America. There's Daredevil. There's a New Mutants line. There's going to be a, just Peter Parker, the spectacular Spider-Man. Of course, Venom. And a lot of X-Men yeah. covers are all Even a Wolverine. There's a great Wolverine cover. Yeah, there's it's a new really, Wolverine It's cover. really wicked. Just the covers, though, right? He's not going to actually be in the comics? No, he's going to be, but there's also very He's, he's going to be in the comics as well. Yes, How yes. do they plan on doing that. I think for some of it, it's just going to be like little bits of him, or at least we hope. A lot of but flyer miles. Like that's that's, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Like they're just going to yeah. be like they're they got their own storylines. I'm assuming you can't be like, man, this really sucks. Oh, hey, Venom. Anyways, <laughs> that's not. Well, yeah, but they're also. I don't disagree with you at all. But the thing is, they're probably at least partially doing it because of the new Venom movie that's coming out. So they're like, oh wait, no one cares about Venom right now because I'm new Spider-Man just happened. I'm over the movie, I don't want a movie because it's gonna be completely separate and that's that's enough as it, as it is. What's next, Liz? <sighs> Everybody get excited. Everybody get excited. Five Nights at Freddy's has landed a new director and a new official movie. It is gonna be a thing. However, this is what I... <laughs> I really like Chris Columbus sometimes. I don't know who that is. He did the first two Harry Potter movies. Oh, what? Yeah. Oh, Just Paranormal the first two. Activities. Paranormal uh, Activities, some other things. And I think... Mrs. Doubtfire, Rent, Home Alone. And oh, see, yeah, well, now I'm sold. Are great, but then there's also <laughs> young Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> There's, um, there's young, there's pixels. young Sherlock. <laughs> oh, he did, he did Home Alone and its sequel. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, he's super competent. I like Five that. Nights at Freddy's already has such a strong fan base. Like, obviously, they're gonna get butts and seats to see this movie. So, yeah, no, yay! I, I have no doubt they're gonna get butts. And and what I'd like to know is. Um, Vision Con is like next week, and Andy Field is, uh, is going to be there. I don't, I'd like to know if he's actually going to be involved with some of the voice work. Uh, that would be really cool. Um, so we'll, we'll ask Andy when we see him. We will ask Andy when we see him. That's our news. Um, I just we'll want to say, though, the concept of 
to Five Nights at Freddy's. Like, who thought, like, the, the game, who sat down and was like, you know what would be an amazing cinematic journey? What if, what if we did evil Chuck E. Cheese? But what that's literally did what their plan was, because that Chuck E. Cheese murder that happened in, like, 90-something, yeah. that's There's literally a Chuck the... Chuck E. Cheese murder? Yeah. Who was high and did this? A this former is employee got real mad and yeah. went in after hours and just slayed everyone that was still there. A former employee. I hate this. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is what I was trying to end before you got this far. <laughs> Folks, when we come back, we're going to uh, talk about some Vision Con. Vision Con. Lots of Vision Con stuff. A lot of things happening with Vision Con. Uh, and during this break, you're also going to see our artist uh, spotlight this week. Uh, Michaela. You love Michaela. She's cute, too. Check it out. <laughs> Hey, I'm Spoo. And I'm Dee from Springfield, Missouri. And host of YouTube's The Show. We, we are Vision Con. Comic Force, Branson's destination comic and game shop. Comic Force, located in the shops at Branson Meadows. Come see me at Vision Con on Springfield Store. I am Vision Con. Michaela's pretty cool. She's got some pretty insane art. Um, check her out. Uh, we're going to actually try to interview her at Vision Con. Um, she's a frequenter. She's also been in our uh, our charity calendar every year. Not every year, but she's done a couple. I think she's going to be in next year's. I love how her art's evolved. Um, you've seen her at uh, Game, actually, which you, you've been remotely involved with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He sees so many artists out there. Um, speaking of artists, uh, Vision's Con is just right on the corner, Ed, and I couldn't talk about Vision Con not talking about First of all, they have the most amazing art show. They fill up almost two rooms of art. Um, is there any particular art that you like really want to see this year at Vision Con? Well, first of all, I do want to say, Michaela, if you ever watched this and you and I talked, I am so sorry. <laughs> I was not going to protect him. <laughs> I am so sorry. I do not remember this. He has a hard time on game weekend. <laughs> I don't remember game weekend. And that is not because I was intoxicated. It's not. It's just a lot. <laughs> But anyway, art, kind of style of art. Do you want to see amateurs? Do you want to see what the pros can do? Do you want to see just nerd stuff, fantasy stuff? What would you like to see at the art show? I mean, yeah, you got you got professionals and everything, and I and I like what they do. I, you know, but I think I, I also like to think that uh, I don't know. There's a lot of a lot of potential for amateurs. I mean, you see what they've got. They've honed their craft, but you also got you know the amateurs coming up and like, look what I did. And sometimes it's like, oh my god, that's amazing. And sometimes it's like, you are not supposed to be drawing things like that. That is My Little Pony. <laughs> It's like, yeah, but it's, but it's acrylic. It's like, bro, I don't care what it is. <laughs> but it's acrylic. That's too long and painful. I don't... Moving on a list. <laughs> I actually know several of the artists that are going to be there. Yes. This is Vision Con 6 for me. Right. Yeah, so I go every year. And actually this year, we have a booth in the artist gallery. Um, I work with the Blue Art Collective. Right. And that is a conglomeration of four or five really strong artists and some new people. And we're always looking to add people to it. And 
it's gonna be awesome. I looked at a bunch of the pieces that we're gonna have on display and there's even pieces from this 17 year old girl and they're just beautiful. And that's something that I'm excited for is seeing new artists who have something to contribute and who don't have like the name that some of the artists that come to these right. shows do. Like if you Google them, you're not gonna find their stuff. But there are people who deserve for you to be able to Google them and find their stuff. And along with that, our our lead artist for the Blue Art Collective, she actually won uh, the Art Expo at Game. She won, and uh, one of our other artists won as well on a collaboration piece that they did together. So. Um, I actually, when, when, when I first started going to Vision Gone, I discovered the art, the art show. I was amazed at how um, over the top they go. It's very classy, it's very professional. And like there's 16 and 17 year olds that are into this amazing art. Um, I'm, I cannot wait to meet, to meet our artist guest this year and get his take on the artwork that we're gonna have displayed at this art show. Um, folks, uh, every year February, at the last week of February in Branson, Missouri, we do this little thing called Vision Con. And it's amazing. Little thing. It's a little thing. This year, it's there, uh, February 23rd to the 25th uh, at the Branson Convention. The last weekend in February. Branson Convention Center. So this year, guys, um, they're running professional artists. I love this man's work. Uh, Lee, Lee, Lee Combs, um, he's got the, some amazing work. I'm not even gonna talk about the obvious stuff real quick. I'm gonna talk about what you like, because you found it. This is your, you tell me about your favorite piece, and I'll make my producer find it. So, looking through some of the stuff they did, um, there was something I saw called Bat uh, Batman Ninja, which, I mean, part of me, I, I'm seeing that, I'm like, it's like Batman and Ninja. I'm like, dude, what 13-year-old came up with this? And then, like, this part of me is like, if I were a 13-year-old, it would be me. <laughs> I'd be like, that's that's dumb. It's like, no, it's not. The artwork is amazing, and I believe that comic is coming out later on this year. Um, so, I can't wait to talk to him about that. Um, his style is just, you know, you artists sometimes, you guys just, I love what you do. The, the, the Darth Vader on the stripper pole, I'm sorry. There's no way I'm not going to mention Darth Vader on the stripper pole. He does a lot of Star Wars stuff. And I mean, it's one thing to do a lot of Star Wars stuff. Everybody loves Star Wars, blah, blah, blah. There's fan art everywhere. He does really in-depth, like, beautiful pieces. And they're like watercolor-esque. I don't know if you use watercolor or if you use pencils I think it's, or you what, water but it's perfect everything he does like has this real life to it and he's great with his shading his color work is fantastic there's one of uh it's what's his name the big guy which big guy the evil the slug guy oh uh job the hut don't know why i, I didn't get that gonna, one I, um, I was <laughs> <laughs> the big yeah. evil guy wow job the slug the guy even. but there's one job of the hut and he's got like leia by her chain or her ponytail or whatever the hell he's holding on her and it's just really good oh no I that's hope he, uh, i've seen he's traveled with that before i hope he brings it no that's 50 shades of gray i'm sorry <laughs> get out i'm saying <laughs> um i look forward to meeting and talking to this gentleman and figuring out how one comes up with some of the crazy ideas that he does and what what what's the most I, one of the most interesting things like I said the Darth Vader on the strip pole was I love his <laughs> Buffy stuff I love uh, the Voltron stuff which is giving a season three um, I love uh, so I look forward to that as well as um, you know and you you guys both know a lot of artists place like Vision Count with all the cosplay that we're gonna see it's gonna that's great inspiration. Like, I want to draw you, or I want to draw you. How much great stuff is he going to get at Vision Con? A oh. lot. Especially with Star Wars having just come out. Like, if that's his thing, people are going to be in it. There's going to be, like, seven little rays. Gonna be great. <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm, I am super attractive. So, it's going to be like that scene in Titanic. Um, me as Kate Winslet, and him as my Leonardo DiCaprio. I think he's going to see a lot of things that will peak a lot of, what are we talking about? <laughs> Lee, let me just apologize right now for the crazy bearded man that's going to be standing in front of you here in a little while. <laughs> I apologize for nothing. <laughs> How you doing? So, yeah, Sorry. I, I have some cosplay that I'm going to be wearing Friday and Friday night. Uh, speaking of Friday night, uh, Fanax and Fan is joining together with Branson After Hours for Friday night, Fright Night. 
over at the paddle wheel uh, right across the street from the Brands Convention Center. We are having so much fun. We're having a separate costume contest Friday night. Uh, followed, of course, by Saturday night with the Wheel of Inebriation, where people are going to be out there drawing and drinking. Always good. Always, Always good time. hilarious. For Is Scott fan. hosting the wheel again this year? Scott New? Do you um, actually, no, we're doing it at paddle wheel again. Ah. For the Action Fan will be joining for that. Uh, the amount of after parties that we're going to be at is going to be astronomically crazy. Uh, not driving. Do not drink and drive, ever. Uh, it's okay, it's all on site. There's a hotel right there. Stay so. right there and have a lot of fun. Uh, of course, we are doing a lot of great stuff. Are you entering the Injustice 2 tournament? Can I now? Yes, I told you that last time. Yes, I am an entering. I am so entering that Injustice 2 tournament and I'm gonna win. We are having I can't uh, win anything, but I'm gonna play. We actually have a lot of prizes and um, we are gonna have a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, we're going to have a little charging station in our booth that I'm going to make uh, because I like to take care of my fans. Some of the stuff that you see here, we're going to be giving away. It's going to be so much fun. And of course, uh, we're going to step away real quick, uh, deal with paying a little bit of bills, and we're going to come back. We're going to talk about the big, 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 big calm down. Just calm down. I know what you're getting ready to say. We're going to talk about an amazing guest, an amazing guy. He's also a nerd He's right beautiful. after this. Branson After Hours, we are Vision Con. Right? Right. We're Vision Con. We are Vision Con. Chris Cole from the Doctor Who Match Machine, and we, we are, are Vision Con. Hey, I'm Doug Jones. You might know me from the Hellboy movies, or the Silver Surfer, or Hocus Pocus, or uh, Pan's Labyrinth, uh, Star Trek Discovery on TV right now on CBS All Access, or The Shape of Water coming to theaters December 8th. But right now, you are watching Fanatics and the Fan. Hi, I'm Liz. Hey, this is Hawk with Fanatics and the Fan, and we are giving away an Xbox One. And this year we're doing something a little bit different with it. Usually we just enter it in our raffle and you know, you do the thing, you get the thing. This year it's gonna be a $5 donation, but we are actually giving these proceeds to charity. And Hawk, you wanna tell us a little bit about the charity? It's going to uh, Heroes Alliance, we love these guys. They dress up as uh, Batman and Spider-Man and Captain America and they go help sick kids feel a lot better. They do great things and they do it at their own cost. They ask for nothing. So we give them a little bit of gas money and some food money. Take them to Subway, you know, just a little bit to help. And you know what, a $5 entry for an Xbox One, it's a pretty great deal, guys. And honestly, you're gonna be supporting children and having them have a happier day. And you might actually be able to get even more than one entry if you just come out to the Vision Con, uh, Fanatics and Fan booth at Vision Con, and especially come out to the show. You gotta come to the show. It's at uh, 1.30 in the main hall. Uh, at the Branson Convention Center at Vision Con, February, February 25th. Uh, you'll be there. Uh, the problem is finding where the main hall is. It's the one with the stage. Follow all of the nerds that want to win an Xbox One. And Liz. And me. Even though I can't win the Xbox One. No, she's just a nerd. She'd play it though. I can't. <laughs> And we are back. Hey! Replaced uh, Skylar. He had to run, do his thing. Uh, this is from uh, In the Dark Abyss. Uh, you guys have seen him before. This is just, just, it's just a side. He's been here before. That's crap. Actually, this is Skylar. It's Rogaine for men. All it took. Five minute commercial break. Plug that product right there. <laughs> So what are we talking We're about? We're so getting sued. <laughs> we might never see Skyler again. <laughs> We're talking about Vision Con. All right. What um, about Vision Con? Actually, let's, 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 let's talk cons for a second. Because we've done cons together. Uh, you guys have done cons. Haven't we? Though? We've done cons apart. We met at con, actually. We met, we met at a con. We met at we con. Met at the three of us yeah. all met at one con. And didn't kill each other. Didn't kill each other. Thought about it. Thought about it. Came and then close. none of us talked for almost a year and a half. 
I just, real quick also, I just have to say, God bless you, RJ Hattie, if you're yes. ever watching this. You introduced me to my wife, sort of, and man, that man is a talented artist. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'm he's coming back to Vision Con is this year, but... Is he going to be there this year? He's not going to be there this year. Oh, um, man, it's too um, bad. I, I talk to RJ a lot. I'm trying to get him up. To, I want him to come to Planet Comic Con and something mm -hmm. else. I want him to just come hang out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he was in St. Louis not that long ago. We just take up a collection and be like, you don't need to do anything. Just come hang out with us, yes. man. Like, it just, I love RJ. He's the greatest. Tommy, too. Tommy Peach. He is just a party animal. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen Tommy in forever. Mm -mm. Um, what are you looking forward to? What's, what's your gotta do this year at Vision Con? You know what? There's something about Vision Con every single year that blows me away, and it's just the amount of talented cosplayers that are yes. there. They just roam the halls with these just incredible costumes. And I last, like for example, last year I found a girl. She had built herself a set of wings, and they were folded in, and she could like open her arms like this, and they folded out. Remember, yeah, we sat and talked really to her. Really it was what? Cool. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, there you go. But man, talent all over the place. But you know. As far as the things that VisionCon has planned, it, it's just a bundle of fun from like the get go, and it, it, that sounds a little generic, but like that's the reality. How do you target any specific part? Now, I will say, being a huge fan of Starship Troopers, I am pretty dang excited about Casper Van Dien being there. Did you notice how he took that one question? <laughs> I'm super excited about Casper Van Zien. So there's, so the cat's out of the bag. There you go, folks. This year, Vision Con, uh, 20... 18? 20, no, 27th anniversary. 20, I can't remember. It's 26. been a long time. We've done a lot of them. Uh, we got Casper Van Dien from, um, I want to say from Starship Troopers, but he's done so much. Oh, man. He's, he's my Johnny Cage. Yeah. The, yeah. He's Actually, that Johnny was Cage. one of the things I was bringing up. He was Johnny Cage in Mortal Kombat Legacy Season 2. With the leg. Dude, I mean, <laughs> the man has got, he's got that look and that intensity to play any of those characters that, you know, can either be like a general leader or anything, or just someone who, you know, like Johnny Cage's right. character is super self possessed, super narcissistic, and he can carry that presence with him anywhere he goes and just. Whew. What what I, I hope I look like that when I'm forty. What I would love to do. I hope you look like that when you're forty. Is asked is Casper asked is is he because Johnny Cage was designed after uh, Jean Claude Van Damme. Right. Yeah. I wonder if the two have ever met. <laughs> I, I want that picture. <laughs> and to be honest, like uh, I I I take I take Johnny. Over or uh, Casper. Casper over Jean Claude any day. Any day. I just I just think it's ironic. Though. I would love to say that. What are you What are you most before we get back on Casper? We took me took me in a world I wasn't ready to go to yet. Sorry. What do you What do you What is like? All right, I'm here Saturday. Vision for me for like just for personal reasons because I've been so much. I've been going since it was in Springfield. I've gone to every single one of Branson. I've gone to the different venues that we've had in Branson. I've seen this thing evolve like crazy. <laughs> um, I'm loving it. I love it. And for me, a lot of it is going every year. You're gonna see those people that you only mm -hmm. ever see at Vision Con or at Planet. Mm -hmm. And so you see them once or twice a year. And every time you see each other, it's like, hey man, how are you? I you know saw what? you like last Tuesday, you know right? There's, and there's, there's one thing that is, is just a, an absolute reality about Vision Con. And, and all of the other conventions in the area are great and I really enjoy them and they're wonderful. But there's one thing about Vision Con and that is that just being in Branson, being the size it is, it brings in uh, nerds from everywhere, from I everywhere in the come state, in from, from they Arkansas. Come from Kansas. Yeah. And it's so wonderful as a producer of nerdy things, as a writer, as a director, as an artist, as a whatever, to just be, you know, cocooned in that feeling of just, we all love this same thing. And there's so much to be said for just having that community of people that remind you that, like, it doesn't matter if Marvel's mainstream now, it doesn't matter whatever, <laughs> like, there's, there's always going to be those hardcore fans of whatever it is, whether it's anime or, or, or anything, and just that energy is so, it just feeds you, you know? Yeah. It's, as you guys know, we do, we go all out. Um, and these guys are going to help me go all out this year. Our, our giveaways, you've seen our prize box. It's, it's crazy, right? I'm so jealous. We can't, <laughs> we can't win any of it. 
<laughs> I could win the freaking tournament and I won't get anything for it. So our prize box this year, just so you guys know, is actually taller than Liz. From from ground to head. It's this is tall. not a joke. I can now granted, granted, so is that ant that got blown up in Ant Man. The big, yeah, he's also <laughs> taller than Liz, but I'm I'm just saying. Um, we, we went all out, um, and I'll tell you what I'm most looking forward to, because we have a booth, and every year we do a lot of craziness at our booth. Um, what we're trying to do this year is we're going to actually have an interview spot where you guys can actually be us, where you can interview your own nerd to do your own thing with a camera and the lights and everything right next to our booth. Just be a fanatic. I'm going to call it the fanatic booth. Fanatic, the fanatic film booth. And I think that's a great idea because part of the community aspect of VisionCon is you have so many different people from so many different fandoms. Some of them are big names, some of them are obscure, and you're always going to have someone that just geeks the hell out over a costume. Over, over anything. That's the thing too. Is like you have people that are there played, uh, you know, in, in Naruto cosplay, and you have people there that are in Marvel cosplay, DC cosplay. Five and Nights at Freddy's. Five Freddy's. Nights at Freddy's, dude. So many of those last year. Oh, I started there's having still homestuckers everywhere. Oh my gosh, and it's it's I've really seen incredible. Old free cosplay because the the whole I've place. Away cosplays. The whole place. It's just it doesn't really matter what your thing is. Like personally, I don't get into anime. There's very little. Anime anime that I've watched that they I personally still enjoy. They the best anime of all the cons that we go to across the country. They do! They oh my the best god! Anime. They do. I just Absolutely discovered insane. anime at Vision Con. I believe it. I believe it. And it wasn't Spirit Away. That movie still and, and I've had <laughs> more recommendations of, of, of anime that I have tried and enjoyed from people at Vision Con than anywhere yes. else. Even my friends that I've known for years are like, you should try this. And I watch it and I'm like, eh. But someone at Vision Con you walk up to somebody in, 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 in any sort of anime cosplay and you're like, all right, give me three shows to watch and they'll boom, boom, boom. And yep. those will be good shows, you know? And they'll probably be on the list of the animes um, that they're, they're going to be showing in VisionCon because yeah. the anime room runs 24-7 You know, is the coolest thing ever. That's another thing. Speaking of 24-7 stuff that's running the game room at VisionCon, oh man. And the movie they, they, they have Tortured Earth there. Which Are they we, playing Tortured Earth? We, we, yes. We're friends with uh, the, the uh, Kenneth, Kenneth and uh, everybody played, over there at Tortured Earth. And My family has played in love. Like love. Like I lost a child over that. Yeah. <laughs> Can't find him. It, well, see, that's the problem with LARPy is, you know, eventually you lose somebody. And every time. Every time. You know, in the DM, you, got, you DM, you had one damn job, don't mm -hmm. lose nobody. Uh, but you were saying something that I just, because I, I, I know that they're going to be playing Starship Troopers at least once this weekend. What, oh what, what, what were you talking about? Casper. No, the movie room. The movie oh. room. Fine. <laughs> There's going to be a movie room. It goes 24 hours a day. I'm sure they are going to be playing Starship Troopers gonna, at some point. Oh, they better. To my knowledge, they're going to be playing Starship Troopers three times a week, one each day. Uh, some, of, some of Casper's other movies are going to be playing as well, which we're getting ready to talk about. Let's talk about Casper Mandina. Real quick, before we talk about Casper Mandina, I just have to say one thing. Now, we've got, uh, you'll probably have seen already in this, uh, a bumper from, from the wonderful and talented Greg Jones. Um, uh, Doug Jones, Doug I'm Jones. sorry. Doug, Doug Jones. Jones. I don't know where Greg came from. Doug Jones. And he's one of those faces that you don't see a lot because he's always under nice. makeup. Always under makeup. But uh, I did get a chance to meet him many years ago. Um, and what we did, we, we, I sat down and, 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 and he showed one of his independent films and we all sat down and watched it. And I got to watch one of his films sitting like two rows behind Doug Jones and just watching him on screen. And that's the great thing about Casper too is he has taken just the top, the pinnacle of awesome that he was in Starship Troopers. You know, he was he was the the the, the heartthrob. He was the master. He was just everything, and 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 he's done all sorts of stuff so, since then. Like he's done Saved by the Bell. He's done all sorts <laughs> of different things, but. He continues to come back to independent film, yep. and as an independent filmmaker, and sci-fi, God bless, yeah, I, uh, and sci-fi. I love that. I love that because there are actors that are there to make a paycheck, and then there are actors there to make something that they love. And it just seems to me like Casper is one of those people where he just he loves this thing, and he wants to make everything he can in relation to it. And that, to me, is just the most wonderful thing that that. Any sort of celebrity can have, you know? 
Folks, if you're wondering why I'm over here messing with all these papers, it's because Casper Redding's um, IMDb is six pages long. Yeah, how, how about I, I'll hold two, you hold two, <laughs> she'll hold two. And Look at all this that this man has I, done. Look at and it's not, it's not all bad. You know, it's not almost like, nothing is bad. I mean, a lot of it is small time or independent, and some of it is, is literally great. just about. But, but but you know, we could compare this to Nicolas Cage's uh, uh, filmography, <laughs> and, and, and God bless Nicolas Cage and that crazy mother. But he has done like what 108 films now or something like that. Yeah. But the major, almost all of them are not independent. Like some of them are smaller studio, but they're almost not all independent. And there's definitely some that you can say like, okay, you take that for the money. But Casper has this passion, it seems like, for this thing, and he wants to just make it awesome. And if you look over, if you look over his filmography, you can see where he went from a working actor or struggling or starving artist to not because if you go back you've got like you said saved by the bell which blew me away when i fall saw that so you've got your dr quinn medicine one but you've also got uh married with children which was mm. yeah obviously a lot of people use that for a stepping stone then you and you see then you see him do your starship troopers and you can see that his entire photography after that as he started in video games yeah he got uh, mm. one of my favorite games i don't you know if you remember this wing commander but he's, he's voiced Wing yeah. Commander. And that was, it's a little before my time, but yeah. I'm glad he wasn't actually in the movie. Um, and then right after that, he did Starship Troopers, and then it just snowballed from there. He's done a lot of voice work. Mm -hmm. but well, and you know, speaking of voice work, he's coming back for the, the newest uh, Starship Troopers film, which I'm not exactly sure if the animated ones are technically counted as four and five, but, f but uh, Starship Troopers Invasion, which I love, wonderful film. Ah, bug spray and whatever her name was. But Trader of Mars, yes. which has just released, yes. Trader of Mars, and Casper is back is back doing the voice work for Johnny Rico. General Johnny Rico. General Johnny, General Johnny. Johnny Rico. And um, can we just talk about the fact that Diz is in it? Yes. And I don't know, I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet, but it's still the same well, actress. I've seen it before he, before he gets here. Oh, I'm sure, yeah, but it, it, it just came out. How is going to be in it? Is That's that? the big yeah. question. They did kind of lodge her into space in a coffin, so we'll see. But God bless, I, I, I don't care. I don't, they, they I could don't say, care. They could say she crash landed onto the planet that Spock landed on, and I'd be like, fine, don't care, Diz is back, that's all I want. <laughs> And I mean, we, we recently watched Starship Troopers, the best, in my opinion, some of the best romantic elements. I mean, some of the best everything. It was really revolutionary when it came to just like basic gender equality, which I know sounds silly, but it's like everybody showers together. Nobody does anything. Literally the most sexual thing that happens in one big open shower scene is a girl slaps a guy's butt and that's it. Which I'm pretty sure he was okay with. Oh, I'm sure he was okay. I'm sure he was okay. And, and you know, we're talking about 1997 yeah. when there was there was so much less gender equality than we have today. Yeah. But they still had the, the the stones to say, you know what, we're going to throw all of our people in the same shower, and we're going to acknowledge the fact that at this point in the future, it, we have gotten over the, the the race aspect, or not the race aspect, the the the, the gender, gender aspect. aspect. You know, yeah. There, there's there's they're just as good in combat. They're just as good in whatever and. Better. Man, was that yeah, true to well, fair. In some fair ways, much better. better. Yeah, let's say how many times it did save his life, like yeah. all of them. But I, you know, if, that's if, really if, wonderful. If and and I'm looking forward to talking to Casper because he's got strong opinions about the upcoming possible reboot. It's not even possible; it's actually happening. I have no idea what his involvement is, but he's got strong views about it. what I like most about Casper. Been doing all my research. He's a nerd. He's mm -hmm. one of us. <laughs> Okay, it's not a parent like someone like your Nathan Fillion's or your your uh, Zachary Levi's or mm -hmm. Kevin Smith's, but he is one of us. Ask him about it. I mean, look at his filmography; it proves that. This film, all right, exactly. He's a book nerd. He's a movie nerd. Mm -hmm. He's a very knowledge movie nerd. Um, he honestly feels like if the next movie gets made, it needs to be made off the book. Mm. 
He said it won't work. I just he hope. Said, if it's not off the book, it won't work. I just he hope. Said the same thing about Doom. That that they that he gets a part in it of some nature even if he's you know if, if they're if they're just doing a straight reboot then make him the high school teacher make him i michael ironside make That's him Zim. somebody you know thinking. but but make sure casper's in it because god bless that man it has uh, you know that film defined a generation it defined my generation yeah. you know and it defined a lot of other generations in so many different ways as a satire as an action flick as a gender equality statement i mean for the nerds that went into that completely clueless even they're not this is the people who understand not everybody went to that completely in the know mm -hmm. a lot of people went to that completely clueless and what they saw was uh 1950s and 60s propaganda bomb which was still, like you said, revolution. Mm -hmm. It was. It's a satire yeah. on the on on the military, and 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 at the same time, it presents you with a villain who is so inhuman that you're allowed to root for the military that they're also satiring, and that is a balance that is so hard to strike i think so hard as a filmmaker to find that balance and say well i want to preach this message i also want to uh make a good watchable film and and starship troopers the, uh, right here's, on that balance here's my question for for both of you before we before we take off because i, I mentioned i was going to ask you this i'm not sure if you guys know this or not but we started it we started the war with the bug wars. We started the bug war. It literally says in the first five minutes of the first flight. Yeah, because they went to excavate the planet. Oh, uh, yeah. Went through the asteroid belt. So knowing that, knowing that you guys is more covered, knowing that, you guys got to be citizens and join the army anyway, or? <laughs> stay you know, I'm asking her. Okay. Nobody cares what you think. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> She's the pretty one in this relationship. You're asking True. if I would become a citizen. You mean you be a citizen? You gonna stay home and protest? You gonna join this? this oh well, I'm this not. <laughs> she looks good in the shower. I'll okay. Give that. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Um, the thing is, it's almost hard to say because yeah, you're right. They started the bug war. However. Who's to say that it wasn't encroaching anyway? Because I mean, that Actually, asteroid they, 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 field. They did say, the, no, this was all us. This was 100% us. We started the war. Now, the question isn't, isn't are you going to go be a citizen infantry, but you can also be in the Star Corps or the Psych Corps? Or the, 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 the what's, the, what's this, the mental one? What the, uh, shoot, what is oh, it? Oh, Carl's uh, team. Yeah, Carl's yeah. team. The, the, uh, what did they call them? I can't remember. But also, Psychics. just, I, yeah. I, I will make up for the fact that I can't remember what they call them with the fact that Timothy Omenson from Psych is the dude in the commercial. Yeah. Just in case anyone ever missed that, go back and watch the film if you're a fan of psych but Carlton Lasseter yes. is the one in the commercial that's like are you psychic could you help the military I'm like yes Carlton I could please but can you also introduce me to Sean Spencer get better Timothy by the way oh okay but also yes oh Patrick yeah Harris. I forgot Timothy yeah. yes Neil please Harris. sorry Neil Patrick Harris Neil Patrick Harris just fantastic I, I assume <laughs> no one has any idea if he's going to be coming back for this starship who knows um, I know that I I want to uh, I would not be infantry. I mean, I know I would be, but I would not. Oh, want I mean, to I be would infantry. die. I would pretty <laughs> I much instantly in die. Right, right. As a former military person, I will admit that was so accurately portrayed. I mean, I know it was overdone. Mm -hmm. And there was like one of my favorite parts of the whole movie is right at the very end the. Uh, Sergeant that was in charge the Zim. Like, yeah, 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 Zim. And at the end, he caught the fucking brain bug because yes. he demoted himself <laughs> because the military is ridiculous. So basically, the brain bug was caught by Raiden. Just putting that out there for, the, for those of you that got it. They got y'all got it. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> my problem with the whole thing. My problem with the whole thing is the entire time that we have Zim in there. He's not trying to capture the Flash. And honestly, Barry could have ended that war pretty quickly. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Just saying. <laughs> and on that note, we are going to step out. <laughs> Folks. <laughs> also, real quick, I just want to say, Casper, if you're watching, <sighs> I introduced my wife to your movie this week, and I'm pretty sure... I'm gonna have to like cut my hair, work out my jaw muscles, whatever it is that you did, but 
Whew, she's into it. So pretty, Casper. <laughs> We look forward to seeing you soon, buddy. Um, we look forward to seeing all of you really soon uh, in, in Branson, Missouri. February 23rd through the 25th at the Branson Convention Center. Lots and lots of fun. Uh, lots of giveaways. Our, our, we have a panel uh, for our giveaway. We're giving away, of course, an Xbox One. Uh, it's at 1.30 on Sunday. We're giving away all of this stuff and so Not the much laptop. more. So much more. Uh, of course, the Kevin Smith signed Kevin Smith t-shirt. And, and Which, if you want to get a look at that, is still down at the Comic Force in Branson at... The shops at Branson Meadow. <laughs> we... Go check out everybody at the Comic Force. Be sure and tell them we sent you. Also, uh, uh, we do have the Blue Art booth as well. The yes. Blue Art Collective, which is something that her and I do We're separate gonna from this. We're going to be at Table A3 in the Artist Alley. A3, come by and check out. We have art from multiple different artists. And some of it's nerdy and some of it's just gorgeous. It's all gorgeous. I mean, it's all gorgeous, <laughs> but you know. Um, so many things happening. Uh, be sure to check us out. Uh, look for the folks that have a Fanatics t-shirt on or a uh, Comic Force t-shirt. If you're nice to them, they might let you enter in the Xbox One giveaway. Just, just like I just talked to them. That's it. It's like and even if we're not nice, they still get to play Injustice, right? Yes. Everybody can join in the Injustice 2 tournament. It's hopefully going to be a lot of people, a lot of fun. I have no idea how I'm going to control that. What's the, uh, what's the prize for the Injustice tournament? I have no idea. The Comic Force hasn't told me yet. Oh, <laughs> Comic Force, Comic Force is Comic providing Force. the prize. That's going to be good because we were there for the last show. Their inventory is wonderful. It's insane. They have so much. Did you steal parts there. of the floor last time we were there? I about it. <laughs> Check out the Comic Force at uh, Shops at the Branson Meadows. Check out Fanatics and Fan uh, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and of course YouTube, which you're watching. Uh, and of course, see us at Vision Con at Branson Convention Center, February 23rd through the 25th. And of course, check out Casper Van Dien. Hey folks, this is Hawk, and I hope you enjoyed the show. Feel free to hit like uh, if you liked the show, and if you didn't like it, feel free to comment, and we'll do our best to fix it. And of course, hit subscribe, and you can get some extra content, and always know when we're going to be on. Peace!